In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a plugin called Git Signs. So if you're following along with the From Scratch series, uh, you can check out the 11th branch here called Git Signs, and let's get started. So let me make this nice and big so you can see it, and let me show you what you're going to be getting out of this video. Um, you can see that there is this green line over here um, that's provided by Git Signs. If you have something you added, you're going to have a green, well, I mean, I have a green line, but there will be some characters there for you or something like that. If you change something, well, there's an error there, so we can't really look at that. But if I change something, I have a blue line there set up. And this will be dependent on your color scheme and um, some other factors. I'll show you how to change the character or the icon there. Um, there will be a blue line there. And then if I delete something, like if I delete that there, you can see that there's just like this uh, red arrow. And that's, again, a sign that you can set. Um, and the colors will be dependent on your color scheme. But that's some stuff that you can do with Git Signs, but there's some more stuff that you can do. It's not just for that. So Git Signs also allows you to move between hunks. So like if you just come, and these are called like, essentially any chunk of these like Git symbols here is called a hunk, right? And if we do something like type in Git and then press tab and then space and then tab again, you'll see all of the options or the commands that come along with Git Signs. So for instance, we can do, um, let's do next hunk, and it'll take us up one. It'll also say how many there are in this particular buffer, right? So we can just continue to move through them. We can also do uh, previous hunk, right? And then another thing that we can do, and that kind of reminds me there, is preview hunk. Um, and I guess there's nothing for that. I don't know if I was on top of one. Let me try that again. There you go. So you can see this is what I've actually done. I've added some lines there. Uh, what did I do over here? So we'll do the same thing. Preview hunk. Okay, that's what used to be there and that's what's there now. And the same thing, you could do the same thing here. Um, another thing that you can do is you could, uh, let's see, whoops, I'm just going through <laughs> old things there. Uh, what you could do is blame line, so you could see, well, this isn't committed yet, but maybe if we go here, you can see that this was done by me and the specific like time date and the message that I put when I created or I pushed this piece of code up to Git. All right, so th those are a few things that you can do with Git Signs. You can do a lot more with Git Signs. Uh, just, you know, do Git Signs space and then just kind of tab through the list of things you can do. You know, another thing that you could do is um, stage the buffer. So if you look, we could do stage buffer or something like that. I don't wanna make these changes, but you could do that if you wanted to. All right, so that's Git signs. Make sure that I don't know if I showed you. Oh yeah, I just showed the demo. So let me, let's talk now about how to actually install it and configure it. So in your plugins file, and I just happen to be in my plugins file right now, uh, you just wanna add uh, if you're using Packer, you're, you're going to use Use. If you're using something like Vimplug, you'll use Plug. But what you want to do is Lewis6991 gitsigns.nvim, and that's the plugin that you want. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the Git Signs file here, and this is all the configuration that I have for it. A lot of it is, a lot of it is. Uh, by default anyway. So these are a lot of the default things that are already set, but the reason that I keep them around is just so that I have a quick reference for them in case I want to change it. So another thing that you can do is, remember that I showed you like there's all these, you know, these signs and what they look like. This is the icon that I have here. If I change this to like, I don't know, like some text or something, it would be that text. Like I could put an A for add or something like that. I could put a C for change if I just wanted to be, you know, if I wanted to do it that way. So you can come in here and you can change those things. Basically all of the config options you can find over on their GitHub, uh, gitsigns.envim here, just go through the readme. I literally just copy and pasted this thing right here. Um, one note I will make is that a lot of people, I see them using like this icon um, and it's like a straight line, but it's not a straight line that kind of moves to the left, I guess. So like you see that there's some space in between that line and like the, I, I don't know exactly how best to put it, but like you could see like, okay, now if I save this, right? If I come back in and I put some spaces, there'll be a little bit of space in between um, 
like the edge and and that and that icon. So just I, I have an icon in there that won't that won't do that to you. Anyway, so let's go back and find this file again. And yeah, you can kind of see how that one's kind of like in the middle and this one's like pushed all the way to the left. Uh, what's some other things? These are basically basically just settings. Um, there's not a lot here that I, I think is like super important. I think you'll probably just want to use what's in the default config. It's just that I keep this here uh, so I can just remember how it works. And obviously the last thing we're going to do is we're going to require the file that we use to set all of this up. If you're using the same style of managing all of your configuration as I am. All right, so that's Git Signs. Um, if you are enjoying the content, uh, make sure to support me over on GitHub or Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next video.